that the uh, the players got a little too exhausted because the GM just kept rolling over and over again on the random encounter table. And a single day of travel has turned into five sessions and nobody wants to play anymore. So sessions canceled. Uh, uh, brings me back to my first campaign. Yeah. 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 You know, he watches this every I, so often he'll send me dms and be like damn bro put me on blast like <laughs> well we're not saying names we're not saying no, i mean names. it's you cardell <laughs> you're yeah. a vtuber now i'm putting you on blast publicly right. okay yeah well now you put his screen his public screen name on blast so i do uh we have returned isaiah is here i'm back motherfuckers from pennsylvania Yes, yes, we have we have exchanged the mat for the Isaiah. I put them in a little pocket dimension and swap them out as needed now. Mm. Uh, it's like it's like a Pokeball situation. Yeah, uh, I, I actually just like Naruto substitution Jutsu mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, remember when remember, remember when Naruto throwing the Demon Wind Shuriken and Sasuke substituting into it was like the hottest shit. Yeah, although I was always, I always just wanted the, the, that shuriken to come up more and like actually the demon just wind shuriken. Things. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just so cool. It never actually did anything. It was just substitution bait. And I was like, no, it's really cool though. Yeah, well, because by the time you, it would have like, it's, it's the problem Naruto has, right? They stop being ninjas after a while, so using their cool ninja tools is like a kind of a non, like, what's the point, you know? Yeah, what? well, now it's it's like wonky because now they have like actual guns and shit. And you're like, well, right, which is weird. Yeah, but it's like, why would you use your ninja tools when you could just cast ninth level fireballs from the palm of your hands every five seconds? You know? Yeah, well, they, they brought that up, too, because it's like, oh, you're cool fireball jutsu. You can only do twice a day. And then they just stopped caring. <laughs> Was that a rule they established at one point? Yeah, you could run out of chakra. And like some chakra, some jutsu were so depleted that you, like That's Sasuke's right. whole thing is he could only use the chidori twice a day. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they really did just ignore that halfway down the, didn't they? Yep. That's yeah, man. I actually, that's right. They did have like a, oh, I'm tired. It uses too much. Why? Did, what is it with shown in anime? Why do they do this all the time? They establish a power system where it's like, oh, you can't just do all your cool shit infinitely because you like only have so much juice, right? And then they just ignore that power system halfway through. Why, why do they do that all the time? Because the whole point of having that is to have restrictions and stakes. I don't understand. Why does that keep happening? Dragon Ball did the I same shit. Because the mangaka just wants to like keep going up and then they, they keep being like, oh, but that, that limitation I gave myself stops me from number go bigger. So at I, some point I'm just going to ignore the limitation because I want number go bigger. I guess. Like, I don't know. This is the same energy as Jotaro just being like, actually, Dio, your time stop powers, they just don't work. Just fuck you. <laughs> You're like, why? Because <laughs> I said so, bitch. You're like, okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, this is not an anime podcast or a Naruto. But anyway. anyway. <laughs> I don't know why I just uh, I, don't, I don't know why that just came to me, but it did. Demon Slayer didn't have that problem, thankfully. Well, yeah, a little bit with the Hinokami Kagura, but like nobody else could like only do their techniques a certain number of times or anything like that. Anyway, I mean, even then, Tanjiro is still having minor aneurysms every time he tries it. Like, that's true. That's true. All right. What are we talking about? Well, you can guess by whatever I named the title of this, which has not been decided as you are hearing us in the past, in the future. Or from the from the what are you good never mind it doesn't matter <laughs> i don't Brother. know i don't know what that sentence was supposed to be <laughs> i don't know i don't know what that sentence was supposed to be but it's a fucking matter uh anyway uh we're talking about random encounters random encounter um a thing i i mean well, before before I start, before I start, take a moment, say a little prayer, press the follow or subscribe button on your screen right now, please and thank you. Anyway, 
What? I, I feel like I need to substantiate, uh, you know, what, what brought this thought on because there's always something. So we, uh, as we've established, we're playing in a Vecna Eve of Ruin campaign and uh, we were, you know, whenever the last time we played, like two weeks ago, whenever we last played scheduling, um, we're playing this week, though, people, don't worry. Uh, we uh, There was a bit where we were, you know, traveling from one end of a location to another. I'm going to avoid spoilers here just in case. Um, and, you know, Matt informed us. I don't know if you remember this, Isaiah. Matt informed us that every time. So, like, the, the area we were in was broken up into, like, three or four chunks. Every time we, like, moved between the chunks, we were supposed to get a random encounter. Yeah. And Matt was just like. I'm just going to ignore that because like we don't need to be doing all that. Like why this is annoying, uh, which I was like, yeah, well, fair. Because, yeah, moving from the because you had to we had to move around quite a bit and doing a random encounter every time just wasn't wasn't really doing anything. It wasn't reinforcing. It wasn't even really reinforcing the narrative beyond the fact that the NPCs were like, oh, there's like weird aberrations flying around. That's why we're kind of trapped where we're trapped. And you're like, OK, we don't need to fight them a million times to like prove that point. Well, I think the other weird thing is, again, not getting into spoilers, but the distance you have to travel is only like a couple hundred feet per jump. Yes, yeah, not very far. <laughs> so it really does feel like the piranha trap, right? Like you get in the water. There's yes. piranhas. It's yes. Just that's a, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it was it was weird. It was a weird vibe. Um, so that got me thinking about it. And then the other thing that got me thinking about random encounters was playing Final Fantasy 16. And it occurred to me that I was like, oh, this is a Final Fantasy game that like sort of kind of doesn't have random encounters. Now, by my definition, which I will give in a, mo in a bit, uh, I would still say the the fights in 16 are do qualify as like random encounters, but they don't they don't feel like it very much, especially in comparison to, you know, old Final Fantasies. Um, and I think it's they even feel a little bit different than Final Fantasy 15, which I think is interesting. And I think it's because 15 was so open world that it felt like, you know, shit was just like leaping out of the bushes or whatever at you, whereas 16 is it's a map it's a it's a decent sized like map area you're running around on but there's very clearly parts of the map that are designed to be like combat arena sex spots you know so like you can look and go oh there's probably monsters there or there or whatever um so all this got my my brain cooking on random encounters i feel like and i i, I don't know you can give me the agree or disagree on this I feel like random encounters have gone the way of the dodo a little bit in tabletop. Oh, like games. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like games seem to use them a lot less and people seem to have gotten pretty negative opinions about them, like in general. So much so and that I thought this was a particularly interesting thought that occurred to me. That was that was a dumb sentence. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, which is a video game based on D and D has no random encounters mechanic of any kind. You can't just like walk up, walk around in BG three and enemies just like appear out of thin air. Like they don't do that. Every encounter in Baldur's gate three is very specifically placed and designed on the map. And it's funny because in, you know, the olden days of D and D like what, you know, the seventies and eighties random encounters were like, a core mechanic you know they were a strong basis of the game and how it functioned and these days it feels like both tabletop and video games have moved away from them quite a bit so, just, so what i wanted to bring up is how you can make them how you can still use them but use them in an interesting and fun way and not a shitty boring annoying way <laughs> Because I do think there's an execution of them that can be fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. And, I mean, to, to further prove this, right, like, Lancer doesn't have any. Yeah, like, a lot of you modern... Can, you I'll, can set up encounters, but 
they can't really be random because they take so much effort to prep. Yeah, like, uh, you just uh, can't do it. A lot of modern games do not even address the subject or talk about it. I mean, there's a lot of games where it doesn't even make sense to have random encounters, right? Like you can make an argument that uh, like a cyberpunk game, random encounters feel a little bit weird, right? Or or a mecha game, random encounters would feel strange, especially if your characters are part of like a military regiment. You know, they're not just going to get like jumped by, I don't know, space lizards or some shit while they're flying their robots around. Or like that feels sort of out of genre. Yep. But even in games where it might make more sense, it does feel like a lot of modern games just sort of ignore or don't address the subject at all or just don't care about it. You know, like they have no interest in it. Hmm. Um, question, though. Uh, sorry, one sec. My phone was acting up. Um. Uh, uh, you, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I remember you personally saying you really dislike random encounters. Is this is this a thing I'm remembering correctly? Yeah. So, a little more nuanced. When when I'm playing games, like when I'm playing video games, like Celesta had random encounters. I liked those because it, you know, it fills the dead air, uh-huh. kind of lets me slap buttons in a way that I find. You know, assuming that the random encounters are fun and like don't just fuck you randomly. Uh-huh. Um. Which is funny. I, I mean, okay. I like some random encounters. Again, a game like Celesta, I really enjoy the random encounters in. Um, a game where I can control the character outside of a turn-based system, I like random encounters for. But on the inverse, I don't like games like Pokemon um, or a lot of old JRPGs because I don't like those random encounters where I just feel like the math has fucked me on some level because I didn't save... And what now e- I'm going to explode and lose several hours of work. Wait, what exactly is the difference here? I've, what is the distinction you're making? Uh, the balance of the random encounters and how frequently they come in. Because in Celesta, you only really get random encounters while you're like fast traveling. Oh, when Whereas you're traveling in JRPG, around the like map? every couple steps. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so you there. So so you're in the camp of uh, random encounters can be done in a way that does make them interesting, but not everyone does it right. Yes. And I think okay. most people don't, um, like most GMs and then, you know, don't running, you're saying? most GMs are video games. And, yeah. uh, I mean, as far as running games go, I don't like, encounters. I, they just more often than not, I feel like my players, at least every time I've done random encounters, they're just like, what the fuck is going on right now? And I'm like, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't really know either. <laughs> that's just what I rolled. Uh, well, yeah, people, would, uh, a lot of people would argue that's the fun of it, though, is is going. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I'm going to figure it out. You know? Yeah. That that's a that's a common uh, sentiment. Um. Mm. So b- before. Yeah. OK. So That's good. So maybe uh, perhaps I can. uh if not, maybe convince you isn't the right word, but perhaps I can I can uh, give you some some interesting tidbits about how I think you can make this shit better. Uh, OK. All right. Definition, because I feel like we just need to define what I, uh, this is a personal definition. I don't know if there is any kind of official definition out there in the world. Probably not. Personal definition of what is a random encounter. I consider it. A moment where players engage an adversarial enemy or adversarial event in a sudden with no prior warning at all or semi sudden with some prior warning instance. All right. Sounds fair. For anyone who's listening, and I don't know, maybe you too, Isaiah, that may sound quite vague. That is an intentionally vague definition because I think a lot of things can fall under the random encounter bubble. I don't think it's really a tight, there's one way to do it type of thing. It is vague on purpose. It's very open-ended. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree with you. Just based on how I feel about random encounters, I was having trouble locking down my definition of them. So, yeah. Yes, because I, I, I think keeping it open-ended and thinking about it in an open-ended way is how you can utilize it and and make it more interesting. 
just by the nature of shifting your thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So you and your friends sit down to play the Dungeons and the Dragons, or the Poothfinder, or the uh, or the Shadow Dark, or the Dungeon World, or the uh, Worlds Without Number. You know, insert fantasy game here. This is not really a game specific. I'm gonna mention D and D a lot because you know, D and D. Uh, but this is not a game specific thing. That no, nothing I'm gonna mention is gonna be like mechanically specific. It, it might be a little genre specific though because again as I was saying a lot of other genres random encounters feel weird right the, your cyberpunk game eh, maybe maybe not depending on the situation your weird mecha pseudo military game probably not so much your I don't know monster hearts game definitely shouldn't have random encounters that would be very odd you know there's a lot of games where it doesn't necessarily make sense. A lot of styles of game, I should say. I actually, I think you could have a pretty good time doing random encounters in uh, Monster Hearts. Because, uh, like, for me, it, this is not the case. But I always kind of treat Monster Hearts like a World of Darkness light. Like, I like I think about Monster Hearts in, a, in a lo using a lot of supplementary, like, World of Darkness lore. So the idea that you're, like, trying to figure out a murder or whatever, and you come across, like a fairy circle and then just get to do do some weird like fey fun times I think could be kind of neat but uh, yeah I see what you're saying yes depending on how you use it though it almost I would almost argue it wouldn't be end up being a random encounter so another thing about random encounters for me I didn't necessarily put this in the definition but it's sort of part of how I think about it is that they don't necessarily tie or feed into the like main objective the main story you know they're kind of just a little thing that happens they don't feed back yeah. into the overall very much. So it would kind of depend on how you use it in Monster Hearts, I suppose. Uh, so we, we, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of using random encounters? And what do they actually achieve, right? What the hell is even the point here? So, I mean, the obvious... I'll go, I'll go sl I'll slightly off notes here. The obvious thing about random encounters is that they are meant to simulate an abstract, a concept that doesn't, feels a little weird to us in the modern era because we have modern law enforcement and modern safety and modern roads and all of these things. But, you know, it's the idea that you're walking around in a place where... Your safety is not guaranteed. Someone or something could potentially, you know, come after you and you have to be prepared. A more, uh, you know, a modern example of this is like if you go hunting and you're deep in the woods, you could, you know, roll a nat one and have a random encounter with a brown bear. <laughs> that is a bad time, <laughs> but that's essentially what the idea of random encounters is emulating this concept of like, I'm in a dangerous place. I don't know hundred percent everything that's around me. I'm probably not super familiar with the place. Something could happen. That's kind of the basic idea that they're emulating. You, you could also think about it. If you want a more modern equivalent, uh, that's not being out in the woods as a hunter. If you're walking down the street in the city and like a homeless dude jumps out and starts screaming at you, that's effectively a D and D random encounter. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're doing that in Texas, it's going to end in a very D&D &D random encounter kind of Yes, way. it would. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's kind of the if you ever curious, like what what are they even trying to get at? Like, that's that kind of concept they're trying to uh, abstract and simulate. So what's the purpose from a game design standpoint? Right? Uh, wh why even bother? Can I just plan every fight that's going to happen? could so the first and foremost i think random encounters are a great tool to give your pcs information about the place they are in right inform them about where they are without just giving them an exposition dump right because you could just exposition dump at them but doing it giving them this information via random encounters can make it more interesting 
you know, how dangerous is the place? What kind of life lives in this place? What state of the, uh, what state is this area of the world in? So if you walk into the spooky forest and you fight a bunch of zombie bears and you're getting attacked by zombie bears on the regular, that tells you that this is like, you know, fictionally quite dangerous, maybe mechanically dangerous, depending. Uh, but also it tells you that it's a weird haunted forest filled with zombie bears. There's probably something going on here. And, you know, having your players walk into the spooky forest and then run into a bunch of zombified animals is a more interesting way of conveying the fact that the that the forest is like haunted by necromantic magic than if you just had some NPC stand there and explain the entire forest to them, right? That's just an exposition dump and it's generally not as interesting. So the random encounters can feed that, you know, they can have that moment where they're like, you know, they, they get they get in the fight, they kill the bear. They examine the bear and then use the GM go. Uh, you notice this bear is a uh, super dead uh, zombie, actually, uh, and seems to be like it was, you know, held together by magic. And then the players go, huh? OK, that's weird. What's going on? That's their first big. That's one of their most, I don't know, useful aspects, I think. You know, ironically, uh -huh. I don't think I've ever thought to do that use random encounters as a way to like explain the world. So not that, but to like reinforce a specific area for me, I've always used random encounters pretty much exclusively to fill gaps in between the stuff that I set up, not to reinforce the stuff that I set up. Right. Which is actually and I feel kind of stupid for having never have for never have thought doing that. <laughs> well, that but. is, that is, I think something that people kind of, uh, subconsciously mess up a lot. Yeah. They they use them as gap filler when I don't think they should be. Mm. I mean, they are inherently gap filler to a certain degree, right? Like, it, it's a fight with very little consequence or or an in, it's an event with very little consequence because it doesn't have to be a fight. So it's, it's gap filler to a point, but if it's just gap filler for the sake of gap filler, that feels a lot more vapid than if it's gap filler that also tells you a little bit of something about the area or tells you about a character or anything like that, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's just you. I think a lot of people uh, kind of fall into that trap of, of thinking about it too much as gap filler. And I think in early days of video games, I think a lot of it was gap filler. It was padding, right? Because back in the day, you know, you only had so much memory. You only had so much time. You didn't have long cutscenes and stuff like this. So you throw in random encounters to pad out the game and make the playtime longer, especially for a game like a Final Fantasy. So for sure, yeah, that is a that is kind of a, a trap. Uh, another another use of them is you know the very obvious just give your players a chance to be cool use their abilities maybe flex out a little role playing that they wouldn't normally right like you know especially if you're playing a game like D&D &D, your D&D &D characters you know they have a bunch of cool monster killing abilities Sometimes they want to just use them with very little consequence and just like go, you know, go sicko mode on some nerd, some nerd goblin they met in the forest just for lulz. And like, that's fine. You know, that that there's no problem with just letting your players flex a little, as it were. If you agree or disagree on that premise. No, sorry, I thought you were going to you were still talking. There might be a, a slight delay, but no, I completely agree. Yeah, like I've said this before, I as much as I like cool, complex boss fights, I also just like big, like the big swoop, you know, like let me yeah. just whack the goblin as hard as I fucking can. And I guess maybe that'd be another, that might be another thing with me is that I'm like, well, I have fun doing this. So I do stuff like that with my players and maybe they don't buy with it as much because they don't like just whacking shit as much as I do. <laughs> right. You know, which, yeah, so, I mean, that can definitely be a thing where, yeah, some players don't, Aren't, aren't as interested in, in flexing their character's muscles, but but you might have players who are interested in flexing random moments of roleplay 
right? Because this is another thing. Random encounters do not have to be only fights. Most people think of them as fights, again, because of, I think, video games like Final Fantasy. People think of them as fights, but they don't have to only be fights. So, you know, in a tabletop game, right, we're playing D&D. You as the GM are the all-powerful god of the universe here. Do whatever the fuck you want. You can have role-playing encounters as random encounters. The players are moving through the forest. They hear a rustling in the trees, and then a gnome jumps out and tries to sell them some shoes. You know, like, and then that <laughs> one of your players who maybe doesn't like combat, but likes to do the goofy voice and act in character, could have fun talking to the gnome about the shoes he wants to sell and also asking him why he's in the zombie bear forest. I, I want you to know that my brain immediately shot to fucking Nelson. <laughs> I... It's good to know that that's the only gnome that pops into your head anymore. I mean, there's there's the gnomes that I play, but like popping out of the woods randomly to do some wacky woohoo gnomish bullshit. No, it's only Nelson. <laughs> I guess I can't blame you for that. I, it was very memorable. I, for, for those of you who don't know, we joke about the gnome who just committed acts of like rampant terrorism. That was Nelson. Nelson was the name of the character, not the player. Not the player yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the, the player that completely derailed our Strahd campaign and turned it into a meme. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. It was a group effort, the derailment, I think. I mean, it, it's it, Nelson kicked it off, I think. <laughs> he, uh, he was very good at it, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he had a talent. You can only, yeah, you can only suitcase a, a magic gem once before everything goes to pot, like, completely... <laughs> It's true. Shoving a magical gem up your ass does have a certain kind of effect on things, doesn't it? <laughs> a magical gem the size of a billiard ball. Oh, God. They are. They were fucking big. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I hate it. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> third, third notable use I thought about for random encounters Um and this this kind of ties into the into the first point of of giving your PCs information about about something about the world, right? Is giving your PCs a sense of time and effort being passed? Because it's a common thing, you know, in 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 D and D and other fantasy games of its ilk. To be like, okay, players, the king has given you a quest in the next city over or in the spooky forest. It's going to take you a week to travel to the spooky forest, right? And these days, a lot of games end up just saying, okay, a week has passed. You are at the spooky forest, players. What do you do now, right? But there's a little bit of a disconnect there. And it can feel kind of weird to be like, yes, players, uh, you know, you've traveled for a couple of weeks to this place, uh, but we're just going to breeze past that with a single sentence. So the characters have been doing this grueling travel for a week or two, but the players feel like 30 seconds has gone by. And that's a little like a, you know, it's a it's a narrative disjoint. So if you yeah, I mean, I, I I definitely have had trouble as a DM trying to square that circle and not having it feel weird and jarring. I don't think there is a way for it to not feel weird and jarring. You just kind of have to accept it. And once you accept it, it, it feels less weird. You know what I mean? You just go we're for all for the sake of reverie. We're just going to schmooze past this. Right. Yes. And and sometimes that is just the move. But the the case I'm making here is that by sprinkling in random encounters on that travel to the spooky forest, it extends the time span, both literally for the players, right? Because it takes more time during the session to resolve the travel. So it literally does it for the players. But also sort of uh, um, emotionally, figuratively, I don't know exactly what word I want to use there, but it makes it feel like the characters have traveled and gone through effort and had to do shit. You know what I mean? Like they actually had to actively do something by sprinkling those random encounters along the way. It doesn't, it doesn't, 
instead of it being a single passing sentence, the players can be like, oh, yeah. And then we we ran into that merchant guy the one day. And then two days after that, we got attacked by the wild zombie boars. And then like two days after that, we met the goblins, but we talked them out of a fight. Right. Like you add events along the trail. And now it feels like a degree of time has passed. And there is like effort and something going on there. It makes it feel more tangible. The journey itself. Mm hmm. Um, and it's, and it doesn't have to be like something happens every, like if they're traveling for two weeks, I'm not saying you need 14 distinct random encounters to happen every single day, but sprinkling them along the travel can, can really spice things up quite a bit. And I mean, I don't know, Isaiah, you, you, you're my test subject here, or, or you were my test subject anyway. Right. When you guys were traveling through the withered lands in our campaign, I did literally this right. Every once in a while, random encounters would happen. I was rolling the dice, by the way. I wasn't just deciding. Um, oh, I thought those were just prepped encounters. No, well, you guys were traveling. Almost none of them were prepped. No. Oh, wow. I, I w- huh. what I so what I did Kudos, then it's <laughs> fair enough. What I did was I would take a couple of I would look at some stat blocks kind of stick them in my like withered lands folder and then i would say to myself okay the next encounter i'm going to use this monster whenever that happens and then i would roll the next you know i roll every day so i didn't know when it was going to happen but i knew in the back of my head what i was going to do with it and then once the random encounter went off i'd say okay cool now i'm going to use this and then i would look at the stat block real quick and go okay what kind of uh what kind of like terrain would be interesting to do with to do this with you know Mm -hmm. so i was the parade the terrain and like the when it happened i was doing on the fly i pre-prepped a little bit with the stat blocks but that's it so okay yeah but i mean my my question here is like did that make the travel feel more substantial yeah yeah it did um yeah, I would say so for sure. Yeah, because because that was the objective, right? Uh, that was well, it was twofold, right? Again, I, like my first point, I was reinforcing the sort of danger and the the grimming griminess of the of the withered lands, and I wanted the journey to actually have some meat to it, some substantialness to it. Um. Ah, crap! There, uh, there was a train of thought there. Well, actually, don't worry about it, because I, uh-huh. I actually had to have a point that I was thinking of. Uh-huh. So in because I find random encounters kind of clunky and that I didn't really want to do them in Lancer, I actually did come up with a, with a pretty, in my opinion, pretty elegant idea, which not like I fucking invented anything, but it's just like I used it in this way, uh-huh. uh, which was in the first mission. I talked about this, right? They they had to infiltrate like an old abandoned a uh, weapons lab to secure some like prototype tech, right? And right. the idea being is that they activated the security system and the security system had like drones and turrets and all that stuff that they'd have to work through. And my idea was, right, to sort of reinforce the mecha fiction of your ace pilots like ripping through chaff. Uh-huh. I basically said, you, uh, this is like a, um, like a cumulative uh, team-based check. So you need a certain amount of successes before failures. Every time you do fail, we assume that you get into a small skirmish with the like localized security and you win because you're the protagonist, you're going to win, but you do take damage. And depending on the severity, quote unquote, of the encounter, and I had like level one severity, level two severity, level three severity, uh, they never made it past level one. (laughs) It would, so it was like a, uh, for the record, you know, the mechs have like break bars, like Kingdom Hearts with their health bars. Uh-huh. And level one would have been uh, 1d4, level two, 2d4, level three, 3d4. And uh, yeah, I mean, they only failed twice. So the person who made the roll took a d4 damage or no, sorry, everyone took a d4 damage. But uh-huh. I think that worked pretty well. It felt pretty elegant to me. So you, yeah. So you sort of, ex- uh, um, you abstracted the, the the concept of the random encounters and abstracted them out into like a sort of pseudo skill challenge, long term project type situation. Yes. I mean, yeah, that's definitely an option. 
the only uh the only thing i the only thing i would be uh like wary of or or aware maybe i should say aware of um would be you don't want to if you're if you're saying that fictionally the characters are getting into fights or engaging like small squads of guards you don't want to breeze past it so fast that it, the players feel like you know feel like nothing really happened other than random dice just hurt them so you would at least want to describe the moments a little bit and and when they happen give them a little bit of time to be like you know you did a little of this you fought this guy you knocked this guy you know what i mean of course of course and and i did do that for the record i just yeah okay yeah yeah, because I mean that 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 sort of loops back on itself to becoming jarring again if you don't explain what's going on. It's like, okay, you roll these dice, yes. you take these damage. Yes. Like, wait, yeah. whoa, 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 Why do I take damage? What the fuck? Hold on. Yeah, it's the same idea as saying you travel a week in five seconds. Yeah, it's the same kind of vibe. Um, but yeah, I mean that that if you don't want to, yeah, if if you're in a situation where you're like, I want to give the sense of them moving through an enemy infested situation, but I don't necessarily either. I don't have the time or I don't necessarily want to deal with actively running every combat. Then yeah, abstracting it out is definitely a good idea. Conversely, of course you also don't want to do that all the time. Cause then it's going to feel like everything is just abstracted into numbers. And then that's weird in its own way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like as far as random encounters go, that's probably the extent of it that I'm going to give just because the game gives you no rules or recourse for doing them. Yeah. And there, and there's not, again, the, both the genre and the system with that, with Lancer, there's not really a reason to, to throw in random encounters. Like it doesn't, I don't think you're, you're going to gain a whole lot by adding them in. Maybe, you know, if you were doing a thing where it's like the players crash land on a weird alien jungle and they have to, like, find their way to get to the nearest village or whatever, then maybe in that scenario. But the main crux of the game is that you're like a pseudo military, you know, mercenary group. You know, what's the, there's no there's no real benefit to throwing random encounters in there. That feels. Yeah, that would feel uh, Odd, yeah. Yeah, odd for the yeah, odd for lack of a better word. Yeah, it would feel weird. You know, cause like I'm just imagining, right? Like put it in the context of Gundam, right? The the main characters are all on their ship, they're all on white base, they're flying through space. Randomly pirates just zoom on in and just start blowing shit up, you know? You're like, Alright, that's okay. <laughs> like, what is going on? You know what I mean? Like that feels Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like you could do it, but it, 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 without a good explanation, and if it happened all the time, it would feel very out of place. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> what? So typically, just when weird shit like that happens in a series like a mecha, it's usually not. It's like it, it's played like a random encounter, but it's actually like this long planned out plot point. Right, right, right. So yeah. it wouldn't even like you couldn't even really do it as a random encounter because it typically, as it, far as the it genre comes defines in, it, comes into is something. a prelude to a bigger yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, like genre because genre convention is a huge, you know, genre convention is a big deal when you're playing tabletop. You want to play to the convention of genre. I think you do at least. You want to play to the convention of whatever genre you're playing as much as possible, you know, okay, we're playing a high fantasy game. So we play into that, you know, we're playing the mecha game. We do the mecha thing. We're playing like a, a military spec ops game. So we do the military, th like that makes the game feel better in my, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Uh, last little one on, on what you, you know, what the purpose of random encounters are. They could just be a good way to tap your players resources. <laughs> This is especially relevant in a game like 5e where players have a lot of stuff and the game is kind of balanced around them burning through their stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you just random encounters are a really good way to burn through their ammunition, you know? Yeah, it's true. You know, it's 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 we the, definitely we're feeling it in your game when we we're like three of those deep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like and Brett were like, well, I'm out of inspirations, so we got to get real creative real soon. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, That's oh, the thing. Fuck, dude. 
especially you know i mean that the final march with the caravan right like that was a that was a similar kind of thing it, it wasn't in that particular case it wasn't your character's resources as much but it was the resources of the entire group burning and burning and burning and it was like yeah put the tension on yeah, yeah. um now granted i will say in that particular instance i think i fucked up because i i stretch things too thin but that was a you know that was an experiment i tried <laughs> yeah uh, i mean look there's there's things like that are worth trying and either you know maybe succeeding or failing at because that be that allows you to extrapolate not only into the system you're playing but like other systems as well yeah it allows you to extrapolate ideas especially because you know when you're playing at your home game you can't play test things so, you know, you kind of just the have entire to games of play. Test. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The games, you know, you have to play test as you go. You have to figure it out. Like I was literally coming up with my own math, my own DCs, all that shit for that particular segment of the game. And I had no way to test it, really, other than looking uh, side note. I was literally a fun fact peek behind the curtain. I was looking up or I had pulled up a um, a like dice calculation program. And I was punching in the math to put it into percentages so I could figure out like, OK, if I want this thing to happen roughly 50 percent of the time, what what do the dice need to look like for that to, to work out? <laughs> Wild. Yeah, yeah. I was literally calculating the dice rolls because I had no other way to, you know, I had no other way to get that information. Right. I, I can't I can't have you guys play test it because I wanted it to be like a, you know, a thing in the moment. So. Yeah, I was literally looking up dice rolling calculations and punching the math and getting percentages and all that shit. Yeah, I, I that was fun. So it's funny, you like you do a lot of work in the, on the back end to sort of alleviate that. And I think this is funny because this is something me and Matt talked about. Where we're like, we may or may not just shift that shit on the fly. <laughs> it's like, oh, definitely over tune this crank it. But you have said you don't like doing that. So you've like figured out a system to help you do it without having to. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. If, if I do enough, if I f if I fiddle and and estimate, you know, it, it's never going to be exact, of course. But if I estimate the math well enough on the back end before it happens, I could I put myself I set myself up for a more comfortable position while it's happening. It's not 100 percent, obviously, it's not foolproof, but yeah. Um. But yes, yeah, tapping tapping your player characters resources, especially in a game like a 5e, like a Pathfinder, where players have a lot of resources to tap into. Random encounters are great for that. Um, now, so that's 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 what they achieve. That's what the purpose of them. That's what they you know, that's what, those are a couple of, th I mean, I guess, well, I should say before I move on, do you have any other like uses for why you might want to use random encounters that's come to your mind that I didn't mention? Let me think. Because I tried to keep them pretty broad in general with the intention of, you know, covering a lot of base. Yeah, I mean, we, we got passage of time, expression of character, using resources, uh, alleviating AD, uh, alleviating ADHD. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it just whacking shit. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like we've pretty accurately covered all the bases. Okay. So now the follow up question becomes: All right, so if we know what they do, uh, wh when should we actually use them? I oh, mean, good luck with this, brother. I I don't have the answer. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. I think I think I, I kept this bit kind of brief because I didn't have a very precise answer here. But generally, here's the thing: not all games need random encounters, which we've already established, right? Your genre of game will dictate this a lot. If you're playing a mecha game, you probably don't need random encounters. If you're playing Blades in the Dark, you probably don't need random encounters so much. You know, you're playing. I don't know. Was, uh, I, again, <laughs> monster. Again, let's go back. Mo you're playing Monster Hearts. You probably don't need it so much. 
you know, the, the example I gave in my notes here was like, if you have a game focused around political movers and shakers where the characters are in a major city all the time, you're going to be a lot less likely to need to lean into random encounters because that's just not really the type of game. Even if you're playing D&D, &D, but you're playing, you're trying to sort of Game of Thronesify your D&D &D, and you're playing everything in Waterdeep or Baldur's Gate. Yeah, you're probably not going to do random encounters as much. Because it, it feels, it also just feels fictionally weird, right? Because Baldur's Gate or Waterdeep are, you know, they're the, they're the New York City. They're the Chicago of the Forgotten Realms. They're safer than just wandering out into the random spooky forest. So having the same degree of random encounters in a civilized city just fictionally is feels weird and off. Now, of course, we we don't need to go down the rabbit hole, of, you know, cities and dangerousness and crime and all that. But you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, like the type of game dictates that a lot. And if you aren't, the one thing I will say is if you're not using random encounters in your game, you might want to put different things into the game to convey a, like a similar effect as random encounters. So, you know, I mentioned the giving the players information about the area they're in. If you're not using random encounters, then maybe that information, you know, let's use the water deep example. The players walk into a shop and they talk to a guy who runs like a, a melons, you know, sells fruit or whatever. And he tells them a little bit about the city. That is sort of your information delivery system as opposed to the sort of random encounter method of it. Uh, that also can kind of be your, you know, obviously your role playing stuff and whatnot. So you just might want to throw other things in place of the random encounters. Also, if your players are walking around the city looking for something and you want them to feel the passage of time, you know, they talk to some pedestrians. They see a random cultist guy shouting on the street about the end times. They like, you know, buy some stuff at a stall, right? That that does the that does the passage of time aspect of it. So taking all those aspects and just retooling them a little bit to your style of game, if you're not going to go with the random encounter method. But in terms of when you're utilizing them, you know, in a, in a genre that makes sense, as we established, so your your fantasy stuff is going to be the most common one. And I also think fictionally, in a place that it makes sense, you know, walking through the spooky forest, it makes more sense to have random encounters than walking down the crowded streets of Baldur's Gate. Uh, especially if you're in, you know, the money district, the financial district of Baldur's Gate or something like that. And using them, you know, using them to convey information and mechanically, like, I guess the best way to put it is mechanically flex the game. Flex the, what am I trying to say? Use them to, I, I guess, interact with the game. I don't know. Like, Again, D&D &D characters. I think I see what you're saying. Yeah. You I'm, I'm... So so D&D &D characters are box of are are a box of knives, right? They are they are they are characters yeah. built like weapons on legs. If you never have a single fight in your game ever, the characters can't do their thing. So by having the random encounters that lets you interact with the the mechanics of the game in a very like pure way, you know? That's yeah, one. I, so it's not the only method, obviously. I actually just had a thought. Uh huh. So Lancer, it does, it still doesn't do random encounters, but it does have a a sort of adjacent idea where because the players have so much agency to like, you know, call in their resources, be like, oh, you know, oh wait, we know that guy working for IPSN who might be able to get us an orbital drop. 
that sort of creates the random encounter because that might not have existed before, but now it does. So you kind of have to treat it like one and there could be stuff. And obviously that's a beneficial thing. Uh -huh. But if they want to do a resource and they, for example, fail a roll and then their next thing is, oh, you get, you know, jumped by thugs because you tried, you know, ripping off a gang boss or whatever. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not exactly a random encounter, but it is. It fills a similar brain space. Yes, it fills a similar gap. Or mechanical in, space. Yeah, it fills. Yeah, yeah, it fills a similar mechanical gap in that it's making the characters utilize their tools. They're potentially doing some role play. Maybe they have to. Maybe they learn something about the situation. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're getting at. Yeah, they're they're, they're just they're one of the. E it, it feels like to me. It's one of the easiest and purest ways to just play the game as it is, like as intended. Especially if you're playing something like D and D, you know. Yeah. Like you run into the woods, you get into a fight with the zombie bears. You roll initiative. Everyone gets to do the thing. After you defeat the zombie bears, you have a little role play thing where the druid examines the bears and makes a nature check and figures out like, oh, they're weird zombie bears and they've been affected by magic. And then they discuss a little like it's the most pure little bubble of like you interact with every little aspect of the game in this quick shot. Right. Explore the forest. Get in a fight. Do the social thing. You know. It, it fuels. It fuels. It's like. It's like you're playing the game correctly, which I know is a weird way to put it, but you know what I mean? No, no, you know, it, it, I get exactly what you're saying. We've yeah. talked about this before, right? Like trying to run things as close to rules as written and rules as intended as intended and to yeah. capture like the feel. Yes. Which I think a lot of the time, I think, you know, people, they have their idea of how I think. Like that. They have their own idea how and how a thing works, and it, uh -huh. I think, often clashes. So to try to really capture the field, yeah, yeah assumptions see. assumptions get made, yes, but you can, yeah, the, you can you can almost play with your assumptions a little bit by by doing something like random encounters. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> it took us a little. It took us a little bit to get there, but yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I phrased the question wrong in terms of when to use them, but yeah. So, okay. So we've decided. Let's say you know, in this hypothetical situation, you're GMing. You've decided. Let's just assume you're playing D and D because that's you know the most obvious one. He said, all right, I'm going to use random encounters in my game. And I'm going to try and hit all the bullet points that we were just talking about so that they feel, you know, they feel like they have some meat to them. They're not just fluff nonsense. How do I make them not annoying? <laughs> right? This is the biggest hurdle, I think. I, I assume you... It, no, it, no, it absolutely is. Yeah. yeah. I, so like I said, wait, was waiting for you to finish. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. And yeah. for me, I think I, I think genuinely I'm a good litmus test for this because I get very easily annoyed at random encounters. Like, I shit. What was I playing? Uh, I was playing Shin Megami Tensei One, which is a very good game. Uh, like it's old as hell. It's a yeah. good game, but as you get farther and farther along in SMT One and a lot of the early SMT and Persona games, yeah. the game just goes. How do you know we're getting harder in difficulty? Because we're just going to put random encounters every three or four steps. Yes. At that point, you're just smashing your forehead into the keyboard as hard as possible because you're like, game, surely you could have figured out literally anything else out. Well, and what part of the, the fuck part of the problem, too, is that the random encounters in, in a lot of those old school RPGs, the random encounters that they were having you partake in are often pretty easy so it's mostly like, oh, no, get into a fight, hammer the attack button. Oh, no, get into another fight, hammer the attack button. Oh, I got to cast a healing spell this time. Hammer the attack. But, you know, so. Oh, no, they're I, not I even. He had simple encounters. They are not. <laughs> oh, well, you have to use full brain power every 20 to 30 seconds because. Oh, well, yeah. That was a wild and gay back in the day. Uh, it, yeah. So. 
Yeah. All right. So how do, how do we? Yeah. So what do we make them? Especially, you know, a video game is one thing, but, you know, fucking you're playing D&D with your homies. You're not trying to piss all your friends off by, like, making the fight every five feet. Right? You know, it's unnecessary. I think a good place to look on how to handling it, though, and it's funny that we started this conversation with video games or we started this bit with video games. I think video games are actually a great lesson for how you can do this because some games do it well and some games do it badly and you can learn from both. So old school RPGs and when I'm talking, I'm talking, you know, 90s, early 2000s, maybe even a little uh, eight, 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 you know. When, hold on, hold on. When did, hold on. Final Fantasy 1. No, not 14. God damn it, Google. It would have to be. It, there's no way it was 90. Uh, 87, so almost. Yeah, okay. Had a almost. Feeling. Okay. But yeah, so I'm talking about like, yeah, old school shit, right? Old school classic, not the way that we currently use that's become a genre term. I can't say classic now. Classic. Old, yeah. <laughs> old school RPG. Yeah. Cause classic RPG means it's very specific style of game. Old school RPGs like final fantasy and Pokemon, right? Random encounters are a core mechanic of those games. And when I say core mechanic, I mean the game is built around the fact that if you want to get from point A to point B in any sense, any and at any time you're getting into fights is happening you're getting attacked by goblins and phoenixes and dinosaurs and man whatever the fuck i it's a little bit of a tangent but i always think about how it's really funny that in final fantasy 8 in the very beginning of the game right as you leave the kind of main uh, initial hub area the like little city you can run out into the woods and you have a chance to encounter a t-rex and that T-Rex in Final Fantasy VIII at the beginning, because this is early on, that T-Rex will fuck you up. But I'm you, sure. <laughs> but you can kill it if you're Giga Chadly enough. But it's like kind of not that worth it. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that it's, makes sense. <laughs> it's yeah, old Final Fantasy nonsense. It's just funny because you're like, oh, shit, that's a T-Rex. And like, yeah, it's not really worth it, but you can kill it if you really want. And shit, there wasn't even in a PS1 game. There wasn't even achievements. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're just like, I did. I totally guys. Guys, no, I, I totally I did promise it. You I trust totally me. did, I did it. it for sure. It, yes, I did it. There's no. Dude, proof, I love that shit back in the I day. Did it. Like, oh, ironically, people being like, no, guys, you don't understand. I got like a 40 kill streak in Black Ops 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like fucking like Metal Gear Solid. Uh, fuck me. In Call of Duty 4. And you're like, uh huh. Sure, bud. Yeah. <laughs> there is no proof. You didn't have a camera. I had, you had no achievements. You had nothing. I had a my cousin had a best friend once who would just say the most outlandish shit. Uh-huh. And you'd just be like, all right, bud. Like <laughs> he, he would be like, oh, yeah. So I was playing Call of Duty and then I got knocked into last stand and uh, I threw it. I threw my tomahawk at the Apache helicopter and I hit the pilot in the pl in the helicopter and the whole thing cracked. And we were like. That's not even a thing you can. That's not even a mechanic. Right. You, that's not real at all. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> Just like. Shut the all right, bud. Shut the fuck up. Okay. All right, buddy. We, we had a. It was. So I'm not going to say his name, but we were like, we, we, we just coined it as pulling a this person's name, whatever. You would uh, just be like. Uh huh. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh. <laughs> anyway. Inversely, though, if you did pull some cool shit. No one was gonna believe you. Like you playing, you were, yeah. if you were playing the grind race, the Sonic Adventure Two battle, and you jumped off at the beginning and made it to the bottom of the race in like twelve, like twelve seconds or whatever, and you finished, you'll be like, "All right, do it again." Then be like, "But yeah, yeah, but I can't." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, like it was like a stroke. Of I don't have the brain space to do that again. <laughs> I did it though, <laughs> and they're like, "Well, you didn't fucking do it, then, loser." You're like, "Great." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh. So yeah, the, those older school games, they relied heavily on this, this random encounter as a mechanic, right? But more modern RPGs have kind of changed this vibe. So uh, the examples I gave her were Final Fantasy 16 and Persona. Um, it's become a much more common thing, and I'm sure you've noticed this, to have where the enemies are visible on the field in front of you. 
and you can evade them or get around them or run away from them a lot of the time. So, like, in Persona 5, you can sneak, like, you see, uh, actually, Persona 3, 4, and 5, uh, you know, you can see the enemy shadows in front of you, and you can sneak around them or avoid them, or, uh, or in the case, you know, attack them from behind and get an advantage. And that's that's become a much more common mechanic in quite a lot of RPGs, I would say. Uh, and another method is simply, and this is essentially how Final Fantasy VI, 16 works. The group of enemies are simply on the field. You can see them and you could just, you could just book ass and leave if you want, or you could fight them. Like they're just there, you know? Yeah. Whereas in old school games, anyone who's played, you know, Pokemon, Final Fantasy, fucking Dragon Quest, you know, you know, the kinds of games I'm talking about. A lot of JRPGs. I just listed three JRPGs. I just listed only JRPGs, actually. <laughs> Literally only JRPGs, yeah. I, whatever. But you get what I mean. Can you tell I play a lot of JRPGs? Um, you know, you're running around in Pokemon. It's the tall grass, right? You're running around every couple of steps. The game makes a random roll in the background to see if you're going to get into a fight or not. And then if you get into a fight, you get the whole your screen explodes or, it, you know, Pokemon it like rotate towards the center or final fantasy 10 where the glass shatters that was the coolest one it's always been the coolest one yeah i always love the random encounters fucking glass shatter in 10 that shit was so sick <laughs> and it's funny too good because a lot of the time in those old games you could abuse that like in final fantasy 10 the best way to grind was you'd stand next to a save station because those would heal you and you would run around in circles because the game would check every couple of steps or whatever it was if you were going to get into a fight. So you just run around the save point, get into fights a whole bunch and then save to heal over and over and over again. That's how you grind in 10. Good times. I love Final Fantasy 10. I should go back and beat that game. Love that game. Um, so, but yeah, in, in much more, in more recent times, games have been doing that a lot less. Like I said, Baldur's Gate 3, for example, no random encounters at all. So, well, I feel like, again, this is just me, but okay. I feel like situations where you can see the enemies in front of you, you, it, 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 so A, I think it reinforces fiction, right? Because it's not like. They're actually How there. did I get randomly snuck up on? What uh -huh. the hell? It's like, oh, there's literally a guy right there. I can see him. Uh huh. Like specifically in Pokemon, right? In the new Pokemon games, you can just see the Pokemon around. Right. And right. You're like, oh, cool. Look, that it's it's literally in the grass where it's supposed to be, and it says so in the Pokedex, or that one's in a tree, like it says so in the Pokedex. You're right, like, right. oh, cool. Yeah, it reinforces. They exist. The They're not just things that are designed to ruin my day after I won a gym. But you know. What I mean? <laughs> I will say something. I think it just feels better narratively. I think it reinforces fiction better. And I, 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 I've uh -huh. always thought that Random Encounters created some weird little narrative disco biscuits in old school RPGs. They can, yes. I, again, and I, that's and, just me. And I think a lot of it was a limitation of the technology, right? You couldn't necessarily have all of those models or back in the day sprites walking around on screen at the same time. The game couldn't handle it. So there was a technological limitation there. Um, so yeah, now that we don't have that problem, yeah, why, why continue to do it that way? And I mean, I don't, I can't think of any modern RPGs in recent memory that do random encounters in that old school way anymore. Like, I think everyone's agreed that we don't need to do it that way anymore. Unless you're trying to be feeling like old school style on purpose. You know? Uh, yeah, the only one I can think of is Celasta and that's not that new that's not that but also that one's a little different because it's not Celasta isn't i'm walking around the area and then i get jumped Celasta is the old school D, &D thing where i'm traveling and a check is made and when you're mm. traveling on Celasta, you just see your character moving on the map it's not like you're physically walking around so it's not even exactly the same in that you know what i mean yeah yeah um I will give the old school Pokemon games, though, credit, even though I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. I, I have to give the old games credit in that the concept of the fact, like the fact that the tall grass is where you would do random encounters. So if you didn't want to get into random encounters, you could, you know, you could reliably walk on the roads and know for a fact I'm not going to get into a fight. I did like that. And that is a thing that 
some a lot of other games didn't necessarily do or sometimes they did or like i think final fantasy a lot of the older ones did do that but it wasn't always 100 percent clear you know mm. um i'm gonna be honest I, I did not know that that traveling on roads stopped you from getting attacked in pokemon yeah yeah no you only get attacked in the grass or in caves like a, a dungeon type area uh-huh yeah yeah no i just no idea didn't oh okay. yeah okay well that's interesting also water i think being i beat on, playing surf. several of those games <laughs> yeah yeah that's weird that you didn't put two and two together on that one i yeah no i i beat emerald like i don't how know. the fuck did i not know I, d- I don't know but i i will I say beat emerald and <laughs> pearl what the fuck <laughs> probably because you were thinking of like the caves and the dungeons and stuff and those or maybe or maybe the gym was it the was it the other trainers that was throwing you off because like you can fight other trainers on the road yeah true so that it may that may have been it it also just may have been that i was like oh if i cut across the grass i'm just never gonna have to take the long way so that also may have been it <laughs> and so i beat those games i was like fucking 10 so it's fair <laughs> enough <laughs> So this but uh, so this more modern style of of having the enemies like physically in front of you, the persona method, if you will. Obviously, in a tabletop context, you can't literally do that, right? It, you know, playing the game in your head. So you can't necessarily literally do that. But there are things you can do to emulate that concept, emulate that effect. So rather than simply, you know, Oh, players, you rolled, uh, you know, I rolled a 20, which means that a random encounter is, you know, going to happen. Rather than just saying goblins jump out from behind the rocks and start shooting arrows, everybody roll initiative. Say to them, you see, you know, you see some goblins up ahead. What do you do? Give them the option to engage in a role play situation. Give them the option to scout the area ahead of them. Give them a warning of incoming enemies, right? Say you hear rustling in the leaves and cackling noises, and then the players go, ah, shit, it's probably goblins. Give them the opportunity to work around the encounter. Because that, that basically put them in a fictional position where they might be able to do something else. Don't just immediately jump them and give them no other option but to fight. Because that that sort of emulates that idea that the video games are showing where I see the enemy or I'm aware of the enemy or there's something I can do to get around this because if the players want to avoid the fight, they can avoid the fight potentially. You know, obviously dice and shit need to be on their side, yada, yada. But the option is there. Um, yeah, yeah. There is the little bit of the caveat of, you know, if you're playing 5e, for example, and you're playing rules as written for XP, technically they only get experience points for getting into a fight. But you should I think you should mostly ignore that and just say if they overcome the encounter in some way, they should still get the XP because they still defeated it. You know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily have to be they fought the enemy. Yes. I agree with this because I fucked myself in Hellscapes with my players because, as you all may know, my players talked their way out of about 65% of the boss fights I had planned for them through just ridiculously good roles and, you know, making really good, like, context, the contextual points. And you could be like, well, Isaiah, just don't give them that option. No. No options is for pussies. Let them talk their way out of boss fights. Uh... (laughs) I mean, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just didn't give them XP for like the first two years of that campaign. And then we're, you know, in year three and they're only level 13. And I went, something's wrong here. <laughs> yeah, you kind of screwed yourself off of the curve. Yeah, it uh, real bad. Just and- give them XP, like whatever they were going to win. We're killing it. Give them that. If you want to dock them a little bit, give them yeah, 75% maybe a portion, to do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and also they still did it right. They they use their brain in some way that's more than just punching it, which I think is more important and honestly more interesting. They use their brain and played the character, played their characters. 
and another thing too is docking them XP or not giving them XP because they, you know, talk their way out of the fight or whatever. You're you're punishing yourself and the players, you know, because now the thing that you expected to happen a certain way happened another way. So now you have to deal with that as the GM. Like you're really helping nobody if you do that. <laughs> so yeah. there's just there's just no reason to do it. <laughs> no reason that I can think of, at least. Maybe some. Yeah, someone. I mean, uh, the the only thing I could think of is like you know, and this is kind of an, in my opinion kind of a dickish way of thinking about it. But it's like, well, they got to fight for those levels ups. They did. They didn't literally fight for it, so they're not going to get it. Like, yeah, all right, fuck you. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess, I suppose. But that mentality, I feel like, would only really make sense if you're doing, you know, the Adventurers League type situation where your character goes from game to game and there's like persistent and shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're but home- even then, though, it's because that's a board game. Like, you have to treat Adventurers League like a board game. A little bit more. game that, re- yeah. that requires character interaction and, like, out of the box thinking, which not is not to say that eventually doesn't. You just do it less because there has to be a level of standardization. Yes, it makes more way more sense in home games. Like there's there's almost no excuse in a Correct. home game. Yeah. Uh. Now that being said, all of all of what I was just saying about you know giving your players a way to avoid the fight or work around the fight or you know giving them different options so it's not just a video game style the fight starts roll initiative you don't have to do that 100 percent of the time right like you you should do it to spice things up but also maybe sometimes they just get jumped and they get into a fight and that's the only option you know both are fine you just don't want to do all of one or all of another right like you always want to spice things up change it up agreed never never you know variety is the spice of life human brain human monkey brain like novelty you know it's true and i could bring this back to a sex analogy if i wanted to but i'm not going to <laughs> i mean i feel like you might as well you've already brought up the fact that you could so <laughs> i mean that's why it's you know you meet a new a new person you bang for the first time it's it's more exciting than the 20th time right human monkey brain like novelty it's, you know <laughs> oh i i was okay are you were thinking about adding toys for novelty is that where you're getting with that, with that? Uh, no, I was like, sometimes, you know, just uh, put a finger somewhere and just see what happens. <laughs> I, uh, sure, that too. Yeah, it, it's all really, we're getting at the same thing with each of these. Yeah. <laughs> just just be ready to dodge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just combat roll. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I just, that, that gave me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just combat roll, but you're already, you're kind of stuck, metaphorically speaking. I, uh, <laughs> Something's coming off. It's not what I meant, but all right, sure. <laughs> Either you're going to look like a fucking pinwheel <laughs> or something's getting left behind. <laughs> it's not what I meant. <laughs> it's not what I meant. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> My brain has created the image. I was going to say, we had two very different, we had two very different mental images. Yeah. Apparently my, my mental images, it fucking, you watch soul Eater, right? No. Oh fuck. All right. Well, there's a character. His whole thing is he's a mosquito and he has a stupid attack where he's, he's got a big ass head and his legs twirl around like a fucking propeller, but it just, his body just starts twirling in space oh. while his head remains perfectly stationary. Uh, <laughs> oh uh, my god, I'm gonna see if I can find a gif. Go on, take your point back. I'm, I'm yes, gonna find this real so, quick. <laughs> <laughs> wrapping back around, so in the, the, the header text to this particular bit, right, was how do we make how do we make the constant random how, how do we make random encounters not a constant annoyance right so giving the players an opportunity to engage it in different ways don't necessarily just make an immediate jump you know different types of random encounters as we've kind of been talking about the whole way through but the last the, the last thought and i think this this is a I, this might be the crux of it for me personally 
What about the return trip? Right? The trip home. The king oh, says, God. yeah. <laughs> go into the sp- <laughs> right. So the king says, go into the spooky forest. Retrieve the magical sword and bring it back to me. Okay, so you've gone into the forest, you've retrieved the sword. Now you have to make your way back out. I have a little personal theory that the reason that random encounters have become so much less popular, and I don't necessarily have like hard evidence of this, but my my theory here is that the going out trip, right? The going to the destination to retrieve the magic sword isn't the problem, right? We're going to get the thing and there's encounters on the way. On the way. The return trip is what annoys people. That's what piss that's what pisses people off. What I mean by this is 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 think about this in a video game context, right? I'm playing the video game, any RPG, pick your your pick. You're going through the dungeon. As you're going through and you're getting attacked by random monsters, you're not that bothered by it because you're exploring the dungeon, you're getting attacked. It feels like it makes sense like yes, this this is what would happen. What is annoying, though, is making your way back out, right? You go into the dungeon, you retrieve the item, and now you have to backtrack out of the exit that was at the start. That's when you get annoyed because you've already been through this area. You've probably already leveled up a bunch, acquired a bunch of items. You got all the treasure chests in the dungeon. You're stronger. You're now backtracking, and now the enemies are just an annoyance because you're probably quite a bit stronger than when you first entered the dungeon, but you're still getting attacked on your way out and you just want to get the fuck out so you can continue the game. This is why games like Skyrim acknowledge this problem. So every single dungeon in Skyrim has an exit on the other side, right? You go in one way and then you go out the other way. You don't... Yeah, thank you don't... God for Elden Ring uh, <laughs> dungeon right, like, right. return skips because yes. like... Elden Ring did the same thing. You don't backtrack through the same dungeon. You go out a different exit. And then there's games like Persona 5, where when you're done with the dungeon, you just leave. You just, that's it. The dungeon's done. You you get a cutscene. You dip. There's no return trip. There's no teleporting somewhere and getting none of that shit. Because the walking back and the backtracking because when you first come to an area, right, you come to the dungeon, you come to the to the spooky forest. It's cool and interesting because it's new. You haven't been there before. There's new enemies. There's new items. There's new stuff you're going to run into. Maybe there's new mechanics that the enemies do. Right. That's all cool and fun. That's what you want. After you've already done all that and experienced all that, you then don't want to go backwards and do the exact same thing again for the sole purpose of just getting the fuck out of the dungeon. That's just aggravating. It's just, it's just annoying, right? You just want to get back to the king and say, look, we got the magic sword. So how do we solve this problem, right? So video games, again, like Persona, just fucking teleport your ass out or Skyrim. There's an exit at the other side of the dungeon, right? Shit like that. Okay, sure. And if you want, I don't recommend, I don't necessarily recommend this, but you could, if you want, just say, all right, players, uh, you guys leave the dungeon and you make your way back to the city and uh, that's it. We're not going to roll any encounters or anything. You guys just make your way back. But then we have that initial problem that we were talking about where the trip feels really weird because you didn't spend any time on the trip. So it feels like you just teleported your way back. There's a there's a you know, there's a narrative fictional disconnect there, right? Okay, so how do we, what's a better option? What do I think is a better option? Give your players a method to dodge the random encounters or fast track them home that makes sense in the game. And what I mean by this is, so for example, in my game, in in the three-year D&D game that we finished up, I, I think my players were around level 10 or so. I gave them all griffins. I gave them the little uh, I forget what what the magic items called, but it's the little statuettes. Oh, the, the, yeah, the, the idol of um, wondrous power, I think something like that. And those idols, I made them griffins and my players got them 
So my players, when they were done with whatever they were doing, right, they go out into the Withered Lands, which was the, you know, it was the spooky, dangerous thing and st spooky, dangerous area in my game. They go out into the Withered Lands and then on their return trip, they just pop on the Griffins and fly back. Right. And what that does is that that sort of achieves two things at the same time. It lets your players skip over the random encounters because they're not on the ground. So obviously you can't get jumped by zombies if you're flying up in the sky. But also it keeps the internal logic of your world consistent and feels reasonable, right? Because uh, the, the dangerous area, the spooky forest, the withered lands, the zombie town, whatever. The dangerous area is still dangerous for normal people. But obviously, you know, your PCs, they're really strong. You know, they're level 10. If you if you roll for random encounters in the like spooky forest area, they're just going to steamroll the random encounters anyway. There's no point in like having them do those fights. Now, you could, I suppose, just make it so that the spooky forest has suddenly gotten way more dangerous and now on your random encounter tables is dragons and mind flayers and aboleths. But fictionally, that's going to feel really weird if like suddenly there's beholders in the spooky forest when it was just zombies before, right? So instead, you give them a way to just go around it. So fictionally it still makes sense because a random a random civilian can't just wander into the spooky forest because they're going to eat by zombies. The players are obviously not going to have that problem, so we don't need to waste time having the players fight zombies. They just fly over the spooky forest or other options. They have a teleporty thing that teleports them back to the king's chamber or they have a teleportation circle that's in the city. They have a home that like sends out a fucking zeppelin or like, you know, there's a million ways you can go about it. It doesn't have to be the Griffin method, but well, so I, I think so you, you keyed on something really like important that I, I Lancer does this. It says to do this, but I think other games should also like take this into account, which okay. is your infiltration and exfiltration zones, right? Uh -huh. Like I, for me, I think I prefer rather than being like, you get orders from the King and now you have to walk your happy little ass all the way from wherever the fuck the castle is to all the way to the evil liches like castle or whatever and then all the way back versus the like court wizard being like okay we can't teleport you into the castle that's just not on the cards but we can teleport you a couple miles out yeah and when you're when you kill the lich and everything's all clear we will teleport in and then teleport all of us back here, but we're not going to risk our lives to go in and go out. So we're just going to drop you at a safe ish distance. And when we know everything's safe, we're going to go in and grab you. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like Lancer literally tells you to do this where it says like at the end of your mission, your your Lancers are probably just going to get picked up. Cause yeah, you bit picked up on the helicopter. Somebody comes to get them. The Jeep shows up like all any of that shit. It also, I think it just makes, not only does it make things easier, I think it, there is, it, cause, you know, while I was running Hellscapes, a part of me was like, well, it doesn't really feel satisfying if they just kill the Lich and then, you know, throw a fucking Star Wars equip and then we get the Star Wars pan transition. But like, why not? It worked for Star Wars. It felt perfectly fine for Star Wars. Why could it not feel the same way for a TFT RPG, right? Your character's don't need to go through the whole song and dance. They're free to go. Let them go home. Yeah, well, the the song, the thing is, is you're you're not going through a different song and dance, right? You're going through the exact same song and dance just backwards. And that's just that's not interesting. That's not really doing anything for you. You know, that doesn't serve any purpose. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. If it works for movies, then it can work for your game. Like I said, the only difference being that for me, at least, and, and maybe some people don't care about this, but for me, I personally just want to make sure that whatever the method for how the how the players get back, whatever that method is, I just want that method to feel fictionally consistent with what's going on. 
So if it's the court wizard of the king says, all right, we're going to teleport you near the dungeon. You go into the dungeon. Once you're good, I can uh, I can recall you guys back because, you know, once you kill the lich, it'll break the spell and that'll let me know where you are. And then I can recall you back. Right. You know, whatever fictional nonsense justification you need, like who cares? It's fucking fantasy bullshit. Right. That's fine. As long as, you know, it just needs to feel that fictional consistency. So like you were saying with Lancer, the, f- the fictional logic here is, all right, you know, boss, we, you know, commander, we did the mission, uh, you know, bring in the evac chopper. All right. Yeah. Be there in a bit. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. Is is It just needs to feel like it makes sense. And then I'm on board. And again, if you don't care about that, then shit, just say, you know what? characters you you return home whatever don't worry about it you can do that too i just personally don't like that as much that's kind of a that's a me thing you know no i mean like you want to avoid the disco biscuits it makes perfect sense yes yes i want to avoid the disco biscuits exactly but the important thing too is this this whole idea of returning you know going home is does not involve the same process of getting there. It will make the random encounters on the way feel significantly less annoying because a obviously you're cutting them in half clearly, but also because on the way to the location, the random encounters have a novelty to them on the way back. That novelty is now gone. So, you know, the interest is going to wane no matter what. So we can just circumvent this problem and then what is that? What does this allow us to do? Come up with more interesting ra- random encounters down the road for the next mission. <laughs> boom, bang, boom. Right? Like it's sort of a, you know, it's sort of like a solve the problem from all angles situation. Uh, so that was, uh, that's sort of a, I think I hit all my points. Yeah. yeah, I think you covered it all. Uh, do you have any 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 tidbits you want to add in on that one, or uh, the tail end of things? Not necessarily the last bit, just anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to, to summarize all this, I think they, they do have a use, but I also think a lot of DMs, especially for games like D anD D, have this desire to fluff things up where honestly you're probably just better off trimming the fat yes like your players will thank you for it you'll thank yourself because it's just less shit you have to deal with like you know of course have that spice throw things in there that'll make things interesting and and don't make it like ah yes we start the mission and then the players go okay so we're gonna do you know the three waves and you're like what does that mean it's like well you always give us three combats before the boss then you're there like ah shit i didn't think (laughs) obviously Throw some stuff at them to, to change things up, but don't feel super beholden to throw random encounters into everything. And like, if you do, they don't always have to be combat. Like, they it can just be the fucking troll toll. You know? <laughs> the <laughs> troll mean? toll. Like, it can just be like a. It just they just have to be adversarial in a narrative sense. They don't have to necessarily be a bad yeah well that's why in my definition i said adversarial enemy or adversarial event right like that was why i used both uh both words yeah 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 and and in terms of if you're thinking to yourself you know i'm not sure like if you think to yourself how do I know if I'm doing this too much or too little or whatever? Like how, if I'm over utilizing, over utilizing or under utilizing random encounters, uh, gauging under utilizing, that's a little trickier. That, that one is, you know, you got to kind of feel it on a game by game, but over utilizing, I think is pretty obvious. Anytime you're, you're having random encounters happen. And then you think to yourself, this kind of feels like padding. Like I'm just adding time for no reason. You're probably doing it too much. Like once it feels, once you get that feeling of like, I'm wasting time that, that gut feel you probably are that, that gut feels usually onto something. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. 
on the inverse, if you are, you know, running campaign and you feel like, you know, the, the pace is too fast. Like you're like, oh, I, I, this was supposed to be a whole session's worth of stuff. It's only been an hour. We've cleared it already. Yeah. Because maybe you had assumed that your players would like, this I'm speaking from experience. If you <laughs> assume that your players would like attach themselves to a specific thing and then they inversely are just like, all right, cool. And Moving on. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's when random encounters are are kind of a godsend because it <laughs> and this is like a little railroady, yes, but it does force them to engage with the game and not just want to jump from point to point to point. Yes. Well, it's kind not of even grabbing them by the face and being like, no, kill it's, something. <laughs> it's not even really it's not even really railroady. You're just making them play the game, which is the thing that presumably they signed up to do, right? Like it's not like an unreasonable yeah. thing to be like, yes, play the game that we all agreed to play. Like that is what we're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's the thing Matt, Matt Colville talks about where he, uh, orcs attack, right? Like, Oh no. Uh, I don't know what to do. My players aren't doing anything. Time for a random encounter, right? Like that's, that's literally what that is. Yeah. They're just going to get whacked very, by some more. <laughs> yeah. And he gets smacked by some orcs and it's a, it's a great way what to was, do it. What'd you say? I, I always think of the, the one critical role one shot where they did the like level 20 thing. To, it's like, I, don't, they, I think they were going to get Grog back or something. Oh, yeah. I never watched uh, it. And at one point, they, they it's re, it was really funny. At one point, they referenced like, yeah, it was crazy. Like these bugbears came out of nowhere and they ripped Percy's arm off. It was, it was fucking crazy. <laughs> and it <that> actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> Nice. As they're playing, a group of like twenty bugbears came out and just jumped Percy and ripped his arm <laughs> off, and they had to grow oh it god. back. On. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wild. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he got jumped in the like literal sense, <laughs> in the, of the very word. literal, yeah, in the very specific definition. They just ran up on him like. <laughs> He didn't even Surprise. get to roll to attack back. They just kicked his ass. Surprise, motherfucker. Literal surprise, motherfucker. It was very good. I'd recommend it. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I, I hope I hope this was useful to somebody who's listening. And I don't know, maybe useful to you, Isaiah, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it definitely either confirms some, some suspicions I had or made me feel better about Lancer not having them. Right, right. Like understanding their use, but being like, nah, I don't need them. Yeah, I mean, I, and like, and like you already said, you already found a way to put them into the game where you felt like it made sense. So, you know. Yeah, true. Through my through my handy dandy little skill checks. Yeah, yeah. So you're 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 already on the right mental track. Hell yeah, dude. This has been sessions, cancel, Cletus. What do they gotta do? Uh, like, share, subscribe on your platform of choice. I was gonna say follow us on Twitter, but yeah, that too, those two. Fair enough. Oh, uh, little little thing, because I brought this up to maybe to one or two people. Uh, my my big plan was what? to do like another uh, oh, community. Wait, wait, like, wait, wait, is is you mentioning this plan gonna be null void because you're gonna do it between the week of recording and, and next week? It, it, uh, no, I just didn't have the time to do the prep that I needed because I was helping. No, 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 I'm saying wedding. No, no, I'm no, no, I'm saying between this Wednesday, th between today and the next time we record, if you tell people what the plan is now, it's not going to be relevant because the episode comes out after we've already recorded. You get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I was I was going to set it for the episode after unless, unless you're doing two weeks. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was going to do it the week after. Okay, okay, okay. Then continue, continue. All, just, yeah, all of that to say, I was going to do like a, a, you know, our our listeners get to bring in, uh, it's it's like DM help. You know, like if you had a situation where you as a player or as a DM ran into something in your campaign and you don't know if you handled it right or just kind of want to know what, what we thought about it, it was going to be that. Okay, but that takes okay. a couple weeks to have everyone send those in. And again, I had to prep a wedding and I'm really tired. And I just didn't, I just didn't do it. So okay. we're going to, we're going to do the same premise, but the, just going to look up some, some questions from the interwebs. Okay. Yeah. So, 
Okay, I will. I will ask more. I will ask uh, ask questions afterward. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just feel like I had to let people know. All right, it's fine. It's it's fine. <laughs> right. I. Okay. Yes. Uh. Alrighty. Uh. Fucking buy gamers. <laughs>